Hello again and welcome back to Pete's Model Car Customs. I've uh, got a big piece of pipe here. And I wanted to show a bit on uh, some wheels I was working on for a, a different project. Um, I wanted to convert the width of the tyre that was on the rim. And apart from just plugging it in, to the different sized hole of the tyre, you know, plug your wheel into the central holes. Um, you, some of them just aren't, aren't the same diameter. So I needed to not only increase the width, but increase the diameter of the wheels I wanted to use. So this is, um, this is the wheel. Um, it was chromed. It's a old fashioned sort of Chevrolet. I believe they're they're a commercial Chevrolet uh hub and drum. I got them in a parts pack and thought they uh, not in a parts pack, in a load of scrap. But thought they looked neat, but the uh, chrome on them was shit. So I've uh, cleaned that off to there and I um know that there's slots in them in in the back of those section there uh, let's see if I'll do that uh, in, in that section there there's a slot at the back of that that hole and I want to clear them out so the first stage of doing that was marking where they line up so I've got uh, where they are <laughs> slippery and then where that area is to line it up to to remove it now, this is something that I've been using my Droma 1 not so much on this last one um, to get in there and claw them out if you can see there's just a little mark there and I'm boo, a slot is forming so I'm um, starting to clear the slots out of there until I end up with a completely slotted wheel, hub, rim, <laughs> any of the above. And to, to widen it, I, I wanted to widen some. I'm using two sets of that, two tyres that, you know, standard skinnies. And then I wanted to use some spray pro streets. To get the wider rim from that to that to make the fit, because I, I really don't like these uh, wheels. You know, and it's something about them, I've never been keen, so I thought I'd want to sw swap around. And I'm planning on a sleeper project, so I want them tucked up and just look as bland and as boring as possible, but narrow the whole lot underneath in a station wagon <coughs> and that's what I'm doing these for but um, the process of putting this band on I don't know if, if any of you know about heat treating styrene strip with in this case boiling water to get it to stay in a coil so I've got a coil of banded styrene and from which I use the centre and that, that's the outer end off cut, which I still may need. And the reason why I start in the centre when banding these is because of the smaller radius. And it, the radius of this coil will increase as it, as it radiates out from the centre. It can't help it. So I, I started with the centre section and formed it around to a cutting point where I, I've got the whole circumference. But to actually do this, which brings us back to this piece of pipe, I slowly got my um, cut, a, cut a strip, this is 8mm wide, um, by half a mil, a bit more than that, 0.75 of a mil. And I, I to start this off, slowly, you know, worked my way around there and got it as neat as possible and as tight as possible to that pipe then I held it on with masking tape 
So I've got yeah, we'll get that one back on there. This is a spare now. Alright, so you've got that rolled on there. Now I did four bands of this, so I, I banded one, taped it on, then moved a little bit along. The idea was not to extend any further than your average mug, you know, coffee mug. Um, exhibit A. You know, if you want to get them stacked into that sort of height. And all taped tightly to the, the piece of thingery. To the thing, uh, all taped tightly to the pipe. Then immerse that lot into boiling water. You fill, fill your, you know, hit, hit the kettle, turn it on, let it boil. Stand this in the mug and pour boiling water over it. Let it settle for a while. The tape isn't going to hold on for very long. But try and give it a minute or two to let the heat go through. That's one of the handy things with the plastic pipe is it will transmit heat at a similar um, rate as the plastic you're, you're curving. Then run it under the cold tap. And you will find, once you peel the tape off, that it will stay coiled. And this is handy for making anything like this. The other thing I wanted to mention was um, furthering on for that is this strip here is discs, our discs that I've cut to end up with a, a disc break for the front ones. I'm going to put a, a disc and make up a caliper for that. But this is using quite a cheap tool. I've got two, two examples of them here. These are called circle cutters. And I have a, a sharp point and a sharp blade and a ver variation of radius. And this is another reason why I keep mentioning things in um, metric, you know, millimetres and that. It's because nearly every tool you pick up now is, is marked up in millimetres. You know, get used to it. Um, all the old imperial measurements are getting phased out and I really do find that working at 125th you can uh, one mil is about an inch yeah so that actually uh, works out quite well in scaling things but anyway you, if you um i've left these in a stage the first thing is to mark it all out the second stage was drill a pilot hole the third stage is to enlarge that hole to the size of the pin Right, and then follow your you know work, um, set this to your outer circumference, uh, outer diameter size. You know, so you want half of it is the radius to adjust the tool to give you the the, the um, radius that point to that point, and that will give you the dot times that by two. It gives you the diameter. Of the circle you're going to cut out. What? Don't cut it all the way through. Cut it 90% of the way through by about you know three or four twizzles in this sort of case. Then adjust it in and start scoring your way in, and go as far as it will adjust because um, it will adjust to about that size. All of them seem to have about the same size of adjustment that they'll close to. Whatever it is. Work your way down to it and take that as a clean area on your final disc. But you can put in score marks into the rest of the radius and slowly build that up to give you a sort of disc looking wear mark. And if you then pop them out of the uh, card, I ain't totally finished these off because I wanted to keep, you know, Give it a last final swizzle on your outer thing of me if it's tough or it should just peel out like that. Now, this one was initially too uh, big, so I put in an inner score mark, which is that one that I want to tr actually trim it down to if this goes well. 
Right, so now I'm down to a slightly smaller radius that needs a bit of a whiz with your with your sal scalpel or your sander, and that will leave me with a with the disc. Finesse it up a little bit. I'm not going to do that now while I'm trying to do this, but it'll give the idea. And then the final thing will be drilling out the centre hole to whatever back fitting you're fitting it on you know whether it's a, a just a steel axle going through it or a pin going through it or or a bigger hub center you know so you want to drill it out to like three or four mil and put it on but it will give you a basic disc that you can start working the caliper onto but these are if you haven't got them handy tools like circle cutters um I think that was it for this one. Is that, 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 that and that? Yeah, so finally I've ended up with the the uh, new fattened uh, wheel. That all, not in this case, it'll have a drum brake off the back axle. It's um, out of the 67 Chevelle. Instead of that wheel. And then hook them up as a pair in, in a station wagon. Um, so that's basically it, how to heat, heat warm the uh, styrene and using an over cutter to make discs of various sorts for all sorts of reasons. Anyway, um, back again later with a uh, review of the Hot Wheels kit. So best wishes from jolly old England. Bye.